Okay, this video is called um, trichloroethylene. Does it cause Parkinson's disease? And here's a, the abbreviation for trichloroethylene, TCE. It's a chemical very commonly used for cleaning things, a degreasing agent. It's also commonly used with dry cleaning. Nowadays, there's a new version of it where they added extra chloride on there. Um, what I like about this slide is these are all inhibitors of electron transport in a mitochondria. And what I'm trying to show you is no matter what you do, you're going to be exposed to a little bit of this stuff. So it's a smart move to minimize your exposure to these things that inhibit the mitochondrial electron transport so that you'll have more energy and be smarter. Because things that inhibit mitochondrial electron transport, this is the inner mitochondrial membrane here, electrons are passed along at like a fireman bucket brigade until they reach oxygen, the ultimate electron acceptor, which then is converted into water and simultaneously the gradient is harvest, harvested to make ATP. So anyways, this is how human life makes energy. Most of the energy in your body comes from this. And it's a really big deal, uh, mitochondrial function, because inhibition of the mitochondria causes cancer, it causes aging, and it also causes Parkinson's disease, okay? And it makes you stupid. <clears throat> it causes um, neurodegeneration. So um, excess dietary fat, especially saturated fat, is a big inhibitor of complex 3 in the mitochondria. But there's other things that inhibit. Atrazine, which is typically sprayed on corn, non-organic corn. Um, F- minus, very common in the water. HNE, hydroxynon, and all that's from omega-6 fats. I'm going to make sense of how this all connects to Parkinson's in just a moment. But I thought this was kind of a cool slide showing you the how it's multifactorial. Everybody always wants 2 plus 2 equals 4, 1 plus 1 equals 2. But that's not how it is. That's why you have to be intelligent. You have to have a little curiosity. And you don't need to know all the details, but you need to get the concept. There's multiple things inhibiting mitochondrial function. And you want to avoid them all as much as possible. Manganese from welding, working in mines, steel manufacturing. Um, some of these things are associated with cleaning chemicals. GP, this is what's sprayed on the uh, non-organic soy very commonly. Um, lead, and another metal toxin. HG, another metal toxin. Um, these are some uh, pesticides over here. So what I'm trying to say is you really want to avoid this stuff as best you can. And one of the things I see, I see a lot of people who are doing cleaning work. They're, they're using powerful cleaners and they don't even open the door. That's stupid. Okay, you always want to ventilate the area. If you can, it's best to avoid the chemicals, but if you have to work with them, then ventilate the area well. Open the door, open the window, have the fan on. Um, excessive uh, di iron accumulation also increases oxidative stress through the Fenton reaction. Fe for ferrous, which means like iron and rust, and Fe for Fenton reaction. Okay, so all of these things act together. So that's why I emphasize to my wrestling coach, Dave Schultz, the idea of incre incrementalism. Being aware of all the little details and simultaneously fixing all these 1% problems, it'll add up. There'll be 20 of them, and then you've got a 20% improvement. Okay, so we're going to focus in this talk on Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease especially affects this area in the brain called the substantia nigra. Um, that's located in the midbrain. Let's see if I can change this thing here. All right, so the, this is the midbrain here. This is your brain stem. Here's the pons. Here's the medulla. Here's the cervical spinal cord. Okay, so up here in the midbrain, you got this area that's called the substantia nigra. All right, it normally has a tail like a swallow. That's a, the normal appearance. When you lose the swallow tail on MRI, that's an indicator of Parkinson's disease. Okay, but anyways, you can accumulate iron in here, and that's associated with toxicity to the substantia nigra. It contains the dopamine-producing neurons in particular. That's the most unique thing about it. Um, and there's other, other mitochondrial toxins will damage it. It also has glucose type 4 transporters, meaning that it is vulnerable to injury with um, insulin resistance. So diabetes, you know, I can tell you, most of the diabetes patients I talk to, they're really slow mentally. Diabetes is a major, major, major cause of brain damage. A lot of people don't understand that. Typical diabetic I'll talk to goes, oh, it's under control, it's under control. Yeah, right. They don't even know what they're talking about. Okay, just to show you, here's a, here's a couple of papers right here. And there's a whole bunch more. Trichloroethylene, an invisible cause of Parkinson's disease. This is a relatively recent paper. The author of this paper, uh, Ray Dorsey, he's got YouTube videos about his research and his study of uh, Parkinson's disease. He's a neurologist who works with patients who have movement disorders like Parkinson's disease. Uh, there's a whole bunch of papers about other mitochondrial toxins that can cause Parkinson's disease. And they can also cause other forms of neurodegeneration. That's what I'm trying to say is, it is well worth your while to, to have a general idea of how a mitochondria works because it's sort of at the center of tons and tons of diseases. Okay, trichloroethylene and mitochondrial toxicity, inhibition of complex one. And here's the structure of trichloroethylene. So trichloro means three chlorines, one, two, three. Ethylene 
means a double bond between two carbons. So here's a carbon here, here's a carbon here, there's a double bond. So that's trichloroethylene. Okay, and remember we had the metaphor um, that your body is like a car. It's like you're given a Porsche at birth, but you have to make it last for your entire life, which hopefully will be 90 or more years. So you want to put premium gas in it. You want to take good care of it because it's, it's all you got. Okay, um, for example, you'll see things like, for example, my shirts. They got a little bit of wrinkles in them. I can't get my family to, to iron them. I don't want to iron them. I don't want to ever take anything to dry cleaner because I don't like all the chemicals in those places. Um, chronic occupational exposure to trichloroethylene, TCE, is associated with a 500 times increased risk of Parkinson's disease. And they figured it out from looking at twin studies. Usually there's a delay 10 to 40 years before the diagnosis of it. But, you know, you think about it. If somebody's working with this stuff when they're a teenager, they're going to be relatively young when they get Parkinson's. Um, TCE was also in liquid paper, paint removers. It's a solvent. It's used to cleaning uh, grease off of metal, for example. Um, aerosol cleaning products, cleaning wipes. Um, it's used for making refrigerants, carpet cleaners, shoe polish. Um, also for making semiconductors. So a lot of people are exposed to this stuff. Um, they now have a, a sort of a variation upon it, perchloroethylene, and that's more common than TCE now in the dry cleaning business, but it's still, it degrades, it's thought it'll degrade into TCE, so it's really very similar. Um, TCE is toxic to mitochondrial complex 1. We talked about that, especially the dopamine neurons in the substantia nigra, which is a spot where Parkinson's disease is thought to have its epicenter of problems. Um, when animal studies, you give them TCE and it destroys the dopamine neurons. Let's see, other side effects. Yeah, it'll cause birth defects. Um, it's associated with multiple types of cancer, including uh, liver, kidney, prostate cancer. NHL is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It's also associated with increased risk of multiple myeloma, possibly with uh, increased risk of breast cancer in men. But that's an important one. Somebody that is asking me recently about multiple myeloma. Um, rule of thumb, anything that smells bad for you is bad for you. I know some construction guys, and I've worked with some of them, and I'll talk to them, and I'll, they'll be working with some stinky chemical, and I'll tell them, why don't you open the window and the door? And they give me this look like, get out of here, you wuss. You know, a lot of construction guys don't age well. I've seen tons of construction guys. Their hands are busted up in their 50s. They're cognitively slow. They're fat. Their coronaries are plugged up. They're often deaf. you got to take care of yourself. Just because you're rough and tough at 30 years of age doesn't mean you're going to be rough and tough at 50 if you don't take care of yourself. And also, a lot of them work in things we talked about. They should be wearing ear protectors with some of these loud power tools they work with. Anyways, Parkinson's disease can be thought to maybe begin in the gut in some patients. You know, there's multiple different causes of it. Uh, but it's sort of like the end step is you end up destroying the substantia nigra in the midbrain, the dopamine-producing neurons. Okay, there's a whole... I gave a separate lecture. I went into some of the other pathophysiology lectures about it, like the Brock hypothesis and some of these other chemicals. So here's a whole bunch of other things that are potentially associated with Parkinson's. What I find most interesting is this idea of diabetes. You know, there's increased incidence of Parkinson's disease in diabetics because the substantia nigra has glucose type 4 transporters. That's a big deal because those are the ones that are vulnerable to insulin resistance within the context of high fat and other things that will cause your standard garden variety insulin resistance. So... Uh, diabetes makes people stupid, and it can also increase the risk of Parkinson's disease. All right, so here's a bunch of other things that are associated with possible increased risk of Parkinson's. Okay, here again is just a normal electron transport. The electrons are passed down from carrier to carrier until they get to carrier four, and oxygen takes those electrons and gets converted to water. There's a proton gradient with protons pumped into the intramembrane of space of the mitochondria between the outer mitochondria membrane and the inner mitochondria membrane. And that gradient of pressure of uh, protons is harvested to let a proton come back into the mitochondrial matrix. And subsequently, that energy from that turns the ATP synthase and enables a phosphate to be added to this ADP. Okay, so it's rather amazing stuff. Occasionally, you'll leak an electron here, but there's enzymes in the mitochondria like superoxide dismutase to neutralize that free radical superoxide. So the, you know, that happens under normal conditions and the body handles it well. It's just when there's excess iron present from becoming iron overloaded, typically from eating a lot of meat and iron-enriched foods, that one becomes more vulnerable to these problems as they get older, whereby um, the, some of these free radicals, superoxides, can get converted to hydroxyl radicals. So being iron overloaded is bad. Okay, we talked about that, a bunch of lectures on that. And now here's that final slide, which is the first slide from this lecture in the beginning as anyways. And um, I thought this was 
kind of interesting. So here's your TCE taking out uh, complex one potentially. HG can also take out complex one. Some of these pesticides can take out complex one. GP on the non-organic uh, soil, that'll damage complex two. Uh, dietary fat excess, the most common thing we think of as inhibiting mitochondrial function, uh, damages complex three. Okay, cadmium, especially in non-organic food, damages complex three. Atrazine, sprayed on the corn, damages complex three. F minus in a lot of city water, damages complex four. Uh, PB is lead, that can damage um, cytochrome C, and also ATP synthase. Hydroxynodinol from the omega-6 fats will damage ATP synthase. Excess iron down here can lead to um, accumulation of free radicals, hydroxyl radicals with lipid peroxidation damage the, of the inner mitochondrial memory. So the point I'm saying is, no matter what you do, you're exposed to some of this. So the smart move is minimize all this other stuff to the extent you can. The same basic concept I've talked about before, living like Adam and Eve, but keeping your indoor heating and plumbing will help protect you from all this stuff. So uh, your nose was given to us for a reason. Anything that smells bad, it's almost always bad for you. <laughs> your nose is, the human body is smarter than we are. It's, it's been around for a long time and it, it recognizes trouble and problems. And something smells bad, avoid it. Don't, don't, don't take that job. Refuse to do it if you have to do something that really smells bad. Just say, no, I'm not comfortable doing this. Okay, um, so anyways, and, oh, and here's the manganese from welding. If you're going to do something like welding, you know, get the best possible ventilated place or just don't do stuff like that. Like I know some guys, they want to be macho tough guys and they want to do MMA or something. I'm telling them, don't do something where you're getting punched in the head, okay? Enjoy your sport, but don't do anything where you're getting punched in the head because you get head trauma and it's going to lower your IQ, okay? You got to you gotta take care of your brain. It's important to protect, more important than the whole rest of your body. So anyways, uh, what we learned today about Parkinson's disease, avoid TCE.